Hey there, Survivors. Cougar here, back with an update on the promising sci-fi survival game, Osiris New Dawn. This game is still in early access, but the devs have recently made a few changes to their approach, I would say, uh, that includes the, the users, owners of the game, uh, quite a bit more in the early access development process. The first thing to point out is that they now have a Trello site. Uh, people from Subnautica will recognize Trello as a very useful tool for people who want to keep themselves up to date on what the team is working on. You can see uh, animations they're working on, uh, paint overs, new ideas for trees and creatures, new textures that are going to be on the creatures, that kind of thing. And that can be really, really useful if you want to track their work, and it's probably useful for the development team in terms of having all that stuff together in one place. Uh, the next thing is that Instead of, now Subnautica had a dedicated team of playtesters. The Osiris New Dawn developers are taking a slightly different approach. They've introduced something called behind the scenes experiences. Now these behind the scenes experiences are meant to involve you in what they're working on and also allow you to give them feedback on what it is being worked on before they actually add it to the playable build. So you launch the behind the scenes experiences from your Steam library. You don't launch them from within Osiris itself. That is a separate entry in your Steam library. Once you're in there, there are four to choose from right now. And they're all pretty basic. And just as I explained, just to give you an idea of what's being worked on, this is the new space station that they're working on. You just read the text here. This experience enables you to explore and spacewalk through the entirety of the space station. Keep in mind that this is a preview of its current state and not indicative of the final game experience. Please understand that there is no collision on much of the space station. It is This is so you can look at it from the outside and inside easily. So let's look at it from the inside. That looks great, doesn't it? Kind of creepy, kind of cool. There are a couple of locations to visit in here. I believe this is the cryo chamber. And these are cryo beds. On, there's more. Some kind of airlock chamber, maybe. Now, this is a big station, and I'm probably going to get us lost trying to get to this next location here. If I do, I can just clip us through the walls. Oh, nope, there it is. That's what I'm looking for. Just check out what's down there. Hmm, there's stuff down there as well. Now, to move up and down, you use the jump and crouch keys to go up and down. I'm just moving forward and back. But here is a really nice looking arboreum. That looks terrific. Should we take a look and see what it looks like from outside? Let's just go right through the wall. Wow. Oh, that looks great. Holy cow, guys. I mean, I know there are a bunch of space survival, sci-fi survival games in the works right now, Imperion and some others. I just think this is so beautiful and immersive. Damn. Should we try to get over to that ring over there? Clip right back in. 
Yeah. So far, so good. Not having any problems. Guess the ring was that way. Couple of frame drops here and there, but that's to be expected. This is a different chamber. A little storage chamber here with some nice looking models. Another cryo chamber, or maybe this is even the, the one that we were already in. Okay, here's a nice cool long hallway. Terrific. Terrific, guys. Very impressed. This, I think, is the ring that we're in now. I'm holding the jump button to go up. Nifty. Oop. Got some kind of sample there. Somebody doing some science. Alright, that's the this is the end of the ring, but we can clip right through here. Woo! Uh, just it looks great, guys. I'm very impressed. I love it. Well done. Should we check out another behind-the-scenes experience? Back to the main menu. Shovel and Dozer. Level the terrain and build. So, they already had the shovel in the game, but it didn't actually do anything to the terrain. It just added sand to your inventory. Shovel and Dozer. This experience allows you to dig all over the map. Simply equip the shovel, press left click to dig, and right click to cover. To operate the Dozer, enter the rover, and activate the Dozer attachment, press and hold the left click, Dozer attachment will level the ground at the height the click was initiated. Please understand that this is a demo of the mechanic and not indicative of what w will be in the final game. We are aware that the train in this current demo will clip through structures. That's fine. All right, so equip the shovel. Yeah, this. I had a problem with this before. I have to go into my inventory and get the shovel out. It says to press 2, but pressing 2 just brings up this your building tool. Um, now, how did I... Shoot. Uh, I forget how I did this before. How did I actually make this work before? Crap. I'm hitting all the buttons. Hold on. Darn it. Inventory, I guess. Okay, inventory, sorry. I just had to go to my inventory. Put the shovel in my tool slot. Now hit two. Okay. Uh, it doesn't save your settings when you exit, so this music's a little loud. I can turn it down. Hold on. Okay, we're back. So that's a dig. Diggy diggy hole. And right click should add it. Oop, well, yeah, it did. Ah, filled that all the way in. All right, cool. So the digging works. And it seems like you could make trenches really easily wanted to. Oh. Alright, let's try the rover. No? Board rover? There we go. Alright, now press and hold left click. And yeah, it levels. There you go. cloud passing over or something? I guess that's a cloud. Well, go away, cloud. I want to be able to see what I'm doing here. We're trying to level the terrain. I'm just going to wait till the cloud passes. Alright, now I'm holding left click. And, yeah. Digging a nice little 
street here. Oh, it'll, it'll only dig in a straight line, it looks like. You can't maneuver while you're digging. But this seems to be doing a good job. Yeah, I can't turn out of here. A little, little bit of maneuverability there. But wow, yeah, you're digging through a freaking mountain, so it's pretty good. All right, great. You can dig, and the rover will be able to really dig on a large scale. Pretty cool. Next. Next is the mission compass. Now, I had a, encountered a glitch the last time I tried this. So let's see how this works. Welcome, astronauts. Thank you for exploring our new experience. We've been hard at work on a wide array of new features. This time we'll kick things off with a new compass system. This will help you discover new points of interest in addition to locating items you already own. Compass is located at the top of your screen. Find cart. Please note this mission was designed for this experience. It isn't intended for the final game. It's a nice looking hab there. Boy, it feels like things are a little bit, a little bit nicer looking right now. All right, the cart is 200 meters away. Not digging the head, Bob. I think you can turn that off in, a, in the options. Should we try third person? He's doing fine. Cover. Great. New sound for the hover. Uh, that initial thump may be a little annoying after a while. Especially if it's got that little tearing sound on the end. Why don't you take this buggy for a spin, and when you're ready, there's someone waiting for you back at the habitat. Let's try the buggy. Oh, you're so cute, little buggy. Adorable. Ooh. Very responsive. Super responsive. Maybe a little too responsive. It's handling these little bumps and gullies well, though. Okay. Nice. Nice. Alright. Good. Alright, we're back at the habitat. There's someone waiting for us here. Well, hello! Who are you? Back to first person. Hey there! Are you friendly? Yes, this guy's friendly. This is an example of our new mission and point of interest system we're implementing. Press F4 to view your missions. Use your compass to locate and investigate the question mark marker. F4, missions, search question mark marker for food. You found a little alien at your base. His tummy's roaring from hunger. Use the compass to locate the question mark to find food for the little guy. All right, I'll do that. You stay here, my friend. I will go find you some food. That hab module looks great, doesn't it? Yeah. Should we explore around in here before we head out? Outer door is open. Oh, we have to close this. Well, maybe we can't get in there right now. Alright. That's fine. Let's use the buggy to go find the question mark marker. Yeah, so one of the things that I mentioned during my early access playthrough on this was that it was a shame you could not see your compass while you were in a vehicle. And I guess I was just speaking too soon. They just hadn't added it yet. Yeah, it feel... Whoa! The control feels a little twitchy. A little like if I just barely... Rest my finger on the the steering key. It it turns. It's I don't know. It doesn't feel quite right yet. I think these plants 
are new. The, the grasses, we're going to be driving through a bunch of them in just a second. They look good, I think. They look really good. This thing doesn't have a ton of power, but you wouldn't expect it to. It's just a buggy. Should we get back out into third person? Oh, perfect timing. Uh, now this has, we got some depth of field going on here. Now, I always turn depth of field off, but this doesn't save your settings, so I'm not even going to bother messing with the settings. I hate depth of field in computer games. I, I always turn it off. It's like, that's not the way my eyeballs work. That big. See, I no, just I don't. I'm not focusing on the thing that's right in the front of the foreground. I want to see that thing behind me. Okay, depth of field, you suck. I'm not saying that this depth of field sucks. I'm just saying in general, for me, I do not prefer depth of field. Oh, uh, uh, hey, oh, oh goodness, I'm a terrible driver. Oh, I hope I didn't get us stuck. Nope. Come on. Yeah, the steering feels a little Mario Kart-ish. I like the grass. This grass looks terrific. So depth of field works for me on the grass because you're not usually looking at grass itself. Not a lot of pop in. The draw in is nice. Oh, that depth of field. Stop! No, just. Oh, goodness. Alright, we made it to our destination. Let's search around here. Hey, a glowing apple. Unlocked mission, feeding the little guy. F4 to bring up our missions, return to the hab and feed the little guy. All right, now, all right, incoming transmission. In addition to missions given to you, we're implementing a system to give explorers rewards for surviving. Depending on how, how long explorers survive, they sometimes will receive an incoming transmission. Fast forward the time of day by interacting with the red button on the right and press F4 to view the incoming transmission. This is where my game glitched last time. After I pushed this red button, the F press marker that you're seeing right now stayed on my screen and I couldn't get rid of it and it didn't allow me to do anything else. Like I couldn't enter the buggy again because all I saw was press F to hit the button. So I'm not going to hit this right now because I would like to actually drive back and feed the little guy. Um, what happened was, at, at just as it described, it fast forwarded time it became nighttime, and then it became morning again, and we got an alert that an incoming transmission, that we had received an incoming trans... No, see? All right, this is exactly what happened before. I didn't even look at... I didn't even press the button this time. And we've got press F locked on our screen there, and we're not able to re-enter the buggy. Now, I'm not going to run for 15 minutes to get back to the hab to feed that little guy... Uh, we'll just call this a, you know, an, an early access tech demo issue and uh, move on to the next behind the scenes experience, okay? Hover dash, make it through the obstacle course. Let's try it. In this experience, you will be able to play and move around with the hover dash. To initiate hover dash, simply move in whatever direction you want, then click the middle mouse button. And air dash works exactly the same as the hover dash, except you must jump in the air first. Now go ahead and give the obstacle course a try, and let's see how fast time you can get. This did not... Oh! 
maybe it did. Okay, it it did save my keybind change here, so we should be able to do this. Now I'm gonna I'm this is gonna be horrible. I'm not actually going for any kind of time here. There is a leaderboard to check your own time, keep track of your own time, and then people have posted times to beat on the forums, on the Steam forums. I am completely spastic with this, so this is not going to be going for time or anything. Let's just see how Hover, how hover Dash works. And then if you j jump and then Hover Dash, I don't think that, I don't know, that didn't seem to be making me go any faster. Did I get it? No. Let's try that again. Oh, hang in there, hover. Alright, now I'm not seeing my hover boot uh, fuel readout on my HUD right now, so I'm not sure if we have to wait for it to recharge or not. Um... I guess we just go around the outside here. Now, I'm just straight up hovering. I'm not dashing. Um, oh, that's cool. Look, you can see the terrain reflected in his... I don't usually play in third person, so I've never noticed that before. His, the terrain reflected in his helmet looks great. Wow, that's amazing. Fantastic. Uh, I guess we're not supposed to run across it when it's red? No, no! Oh, I just missed it. Alright, well... Y you get the idea, there's the hover dash. Seems like it could be somewhat useful, I guess. That thump when when the hover kicks off now is I could see that getting annoying. Uh, it sounds cool the first few times you use it, and then I feel like it'd just be hard on the eardrums. Alright, so that's your hover dash. Hmm. Oh, this grass looks terrific, guys. It's the first time I'm seeing it. Alright, that will do it for the behind-the-scenes experiences. Check out their Trello for more info, and check uh, to keep track of, of what they're working on, and check out the behind the scenes experiences to actually participate and become part of their early access development process. Thanks for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more Osiris New Dawn early access gameplay and behind the scenes experiences. Stay safe survivors.